Compact Disc Digital Audio Compact Disc Digital Audio, also known as Audio CD, is the standard format for audio compact discs. The standard is defined in the Red Book, one of a series of rainbow books that contain the technical specifications for ELCT formats. The Red Book specifies the physical parameters and properties of the CD, the optical stylus parameters, deviations and error rate, modulation system and error correction facility, and the eight subcode channels. These parameters are common to all compact discs and used by all logical formats, such as CD-ROM. The standard also specifies the form of digital audio encoding colon two channel signed 16-bit linear PCM sampled at 44,100 Hz. Although rarely used, the specification allows for discs to be mastered with a form of emphasis. The first edition of the Red Book was released in 1980 by Philips and Sony. It was adopted by the Digital Audio Disc Committee and ratified by the International Electrotechnical Commission Technical Committee 100, as an international standard in 1987 with the reference IEC 60908. The second edition of IEC 60908 was published in 1999 and it cancels and replaces the first edition, Amendment 1 and the Corrigendum to Amendment 1. The IEC 60908 however does not contain all the information for extensions that is available in the Red Book, such as the details for CD text, CD plus G and CD plus E dot G. The standard is not freely available and must be licensed. It is available from Philips and the IEC. Philips outsources licensing of the standard to Adminius, which charges for the Red Book, plus each for the subcode channels RW and CD text mode annexes. The audio contained in a CDDA consists of two channels signed 16-bit linear PCM sampled at 44,100 Hz. The sampling rate is adapted from that attained when recording digital audio on a PAL videotape with a PCM adapter, an earlier way of storing digital audio. An audio CD can represent frequencies up to 22.05 kHz, the Nyquist frequency of the 44.1 kHz sample rate. The selection of the sample rate was based primarily on the need to reproduce the audible frequency range of 20 to 20,000 Hz. The Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem states that a sampling rate of more than twice the maximum frequency of the signal to be recorded is needed, resulting in a required rate of at least 40 kHz. The exact sampling rate of 44.1 kHz was inherited from a method of converting digital audio into an analog video signal for storage on U-Matic videotape which was the most affordable way to transfer data from the recording studio to the CD manufacturer at the time CD specification was being developed. The device that converts an analog audio signal into PCM audio, which in turn is changed into an analog video signal is called a PCM adapter. This technology could store six samples in a single horizontal line. 60 field slash s black and white video was required, and in NTSC countries that video signal has 245 usable lines per field, which works out to be equals 44,100 samples slash s slash stereo channel. Similarly, PAL has 294 lines and 50 fields, which gives 44,100 samples slash s slash stereo channel. This system could store 14 bit samples with some error correction, or 16 bit samples with almost no error correction. There was a long debate over the use of 14 bit or 16 bit quantization, and 44,056 or 44,100 samples slash s or approximately 44,000 samples slash s. When the Sony slash Philips Task Force designed the compact disc, Philips had already developed a 14-bit DA converter, but Sony insisted on 16-bit. In the end, 16 bits and 44.1 kilosamples per second prevailed. Philips found a way to produce 16-bit quality using its 14-bit DAB using four times over sampling. Some CDs are mastered with pre-emphasis, an artificial boost of high audio frequencies. The pre-emphasis improves the apparent signal-to-noise ratio by making better use of the channel's dynamic range. On playback, the player applies a de-emphasis filter to restore the frequency response curve to an overall flat 1. Pre-emphasis time constants are 50 microseconds and 15 microseconds, and a binary flag in the disk subcode instructs the player to apply de-emphasis filter and if appropriate. Playback of such disks in a computer or ripping to wave files typically does not take into account the pre-emphasis. So such files play back with a distorted frequency response. The creators of the CD originally aimed at a playing time of 60 minutes with a disc diameter of 100 mm or 115 mm. 
Sony Vice President Norio Oga suggested extending the capacity to 74 minutes to accommodate the recording of Wilhelm Furtwängler Wengler conducting Ludwig van Beethoven's Ninth Symphony at the 1951 Bayreuth Festival. The additional 14-minute playing time subsequently required changing to a 120mm disc. Keith Schuhamer and Mink, Philip's chief engineer, however, denies this, claiming that the increase was motivated by technical considerations, and that even after the increase in size, the Fort Wengler recording would not have fit on one of the earliest CDs. According to a Sunday Tribune interview, the story is slightly more involved. In 1979, Philip's own Polygram, one of the world's largest distributors of music. Polygram had set up a large experimental CD plant in Hanover, Germany, which could produce huge numbers of CDs having a diameter of 115 mm. Sony did not yet have such a facility. If Sony had agreed on the 115 mm disc, Philips would have had a significant competitive edge in the market. The long playing time of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony imposed by Ogo was used to push Philips to accept 120 mm, so that Philips' polygram lost its edge in disc fabrication. The 74 minute playing time of a CD, which is longer than the 22 minutes per side typical of long playing vinyl albums, was often used to the CD's advantage during the early years when CDs and LPs vied for commercial sales. CDs would often be released with one or more bonus tracks, enticing consumers to buy a CD for the extra material. However, attempts to combine double LPs onto one CD occasionally resulted in the opposite situation in which the CD would instead offer fewer tracks than the LP. Playing times beyond 74 minutes are achieved by decreasing track pitch in violation of strict Red Book standards. However, most players can still accommodate the more closely spaced data if it is still within Red Book tolerances. Current manufacturing processes allow an audio CD to contain up to 80 minutes without requiring the content creator to sign a waiver releasing the plant owner from responsibility if the CD produced is marginally or entirely unreadable by some playback equipment. In current practice, maximum CD playing time has crept higher by reducing minimum engineering tolerances. This table shows the progression in the maximum duration of released audio CDs. Each audio sample is assigned 16-bit 2's complement integer, with sample values ranging from minus 32768 to plus 32767. The source audio data is divided into frames, containing 12 samples each, for a total of 192 bits of audio data per frame. This stream of audio frames, as a whole, is then subjected to circ encoding which segments and rearranges the data and expands it with parity bits in a white that allows occasional read errors to be detected and corrected. Circ encoding also interleaves the audio frames throughout the disk over several consecutive frames so that the information will be more resistant to burst errors. Therefore, a physical frame on the disk will actually contain information from multiple logical audio frames. This process adds 64 bits of error correction data to each frame. After this, 8 bits of subcode or subchannel data are added to each of these encoded frames, which is used for control and addressing when playing the CD. Circ encoding plus the subcode byte generate 33 bytes long frames, called channel data frames. These frames are then modulated through 8 to 14 modulation, where each 8-bit word is replaced with a corresponding 14-bit word designed to reduce the number of transitions between 0 and 1. This reduces the density of physical pits on the disk and provides an additional degree of error tolerance. Three merging bits are added before each 14-bit word for disambiguation and synchronization. In total there are 33 times equals 561 bits. A 27-bit word is added to the beginning of each frame to assist with synchronization, so the reading device can locate frames easily. With this, a frame ends up containing 588 bits of channel data. The frames of channel data are finally written to disk physically in the form of pits and lands, with each pit or land representing a series of zeros, and with the transition points, the edge of each pit, representing 1.A Red Book compatible CDR has pit and land shaped spots on a layer of organic dye instead of actual pits and lands, a laser creates the spots by altering their reflective properties of the dye. The audio data stream in an audio CD is continuous, but has three parts. The main portion, which is further divided into playable audio tracks, is the program area. This section is preceded by a lead-in track and followed by a lead-out track. The lead-in and lead-out tracks encode only silent audio, but all three sections contain subcode data streams. 
Contents The lead-in subcode contains repeated copies of the disk's table of contents, which provides an index of the start positions of the tracks in the programmery on lead-out. The track positions are referenced by absolute time code, relative to the start of the program area, in MSF format, minutes, seconds, and fractional seconds called frames. Each timecode frame is 1 75th of a second, and corresponds to a block of 98 channel data frames, ultimately, a block of 588 pairs of left and right audio samples. Timecode contained in the subchannel data allows the reading device to locate the region of the disk that corresponds to the timecode in the TOC. The TOC on disks is analogous to the partition table on hard drives. Non-standard or corrupted TOC records are abused as a form of CD-DVD copy protection, in for example the Key 2 audio scheme. The largest entity on a CD is called a track. A CD can contain up to 99 tracks. Each track can in turn have up to 100 indexes, though players which handle this feature are rarely found outside of pro audio, particularly radio broadcasting. The vast majority of songs are recorded under index 1, with the pre-gap being index 0. Sometimes hidden tracks are placed at the end of the last track of the disc, often using index 2 or 3. This is also the case with some discs offering 101 sound effects, with 100 and 101 being indexed as 2 and 3 on track 99. The index, if used, is occasionally put on the track listing as a decimal part of the track number, such as 99.2 or 99.3. The track and index structure of the CD were carried forward to the DVD format as title and chapter, respectively. Tracks, in turn, are divided into timecode frames, which are further subdivided into channel data frames. The smallest entity in a CD is a channel data frame, which consists of 33 bytes and contains 6 complete 16-bit stereo samples, 24 bytes for the audio, 8 circ error correction bytes, and 1 subcode byte. As described in the data encoding section, after the EFM modulation the number of bits in a frame totals 588. On a Redbook Audio CD, data is addressed using the MSF scheme, with timecodes expressed in minutes, seconds and another type of frames, where one frame corresponds to 1 75th of a second of audio, 588 pairs of left and right samples. This timecode frame is distinct from the 33 by channel data frame described above, and is used for time display and positioning the reading laser. When editing and extracting CD audio, this timecode frame is the smallest addressable time interval for an audio CD, thus, track boundaries only occur on these frame boundaries. Each of these structures contains 98 channel data frames, totaling 98 times 24 equals 2,352 bytes of music. The CD is played at a speed of 75 frames per second, thus 44,100 samples or 176,400 bytes per second. In the 1990s, CD-ROM and related digital audio extraction technology introduced the term sector to refer to each timecode frame, with each sector being identified by a sequential integer number starting at zero, and with tracks aligned on sector boundaries. An audio CD sector corresponds to 2,352 bytes of decoded data. The Red Book does not refer to sectors, nor does it distinguish the corresponding sections of the disk's data stream except as frames in the MSF addressing scheme. The following table shows the relation between tracks, timecode frames and channel data frames. The audio bit rate for a Redbook Audio CD is 1,411,200 bits per second or 176,400 bytes per second, 2 channels times 44,100 samples per second per channel times 16 bits per sample. Audio data coming in from a CD is contained in sectors, each sector being 2,352 bytes, and with 75 sectors containing one second of audio. For comparison, the bitrate of a 1 times CD ROM is defined as 2,048 bytes per sector times 75 sectors per second equals 153,600 bytes per second. The remaining 304 bytes in a sector are used for additional data error correction. Unlike on a DVD or CD ROM, there are no files on a Red Book Audio CD, there is only one continuous stream of LPCM audio data, and a parallel, smaller set of eight subcode data streams. Computer operating systems, however, may provide access to an audio CD as if it contains files. For example, Windows represents the CD's table of contents as a set of compact disk audio track files, each file containing indexing information, not audio data. In a process called ripping, 
Digital audio extraction software can be used to read CDD audio data and store it in files. Common audio file formats for this purpose include Wave and Ive, which simply preface the LPCM data with a short header, FLAC, ALEC, and Windows Media Audio Lossless, which compress the LPCM data in ways that conserve space yet allow it to be restored without any changes, and various lossy, perceptual coding formats like MP3 and AAC which modify and compress the audio data in ways that irreversibly change the audio, but that exploit features of human hearing to make the changes difficult to discern. Recording publishers have created CDs that violate the Red Book standard. Some do so for the purpose of copy prevention, using systems like copy control. Some do so for extra features such as dual disc, which includes both a CD layer and a DVD layer whereby the CD layer is much thinner, 0.9 mm, than required by the Red Book which stipulates a nominal 1.2 mm, but at least 1.1 mm. Philips and many other companies have stated that including the compact disc digital audio logo on such non-conforming discs may constitute trademark infringement. Super Audio CD was a standard published in 1999 that aimed to provide better audio quality in CDs, but it never became very popular. DVD Audio, an advanced version of the audio CD, emerged in 1999. The format was designed to feature audio of higher fidelity. It applies a higher sampling rate and uses 650 nanometers lasers. There have been moves by the recording industry to make audio CDs unplayable on computer CD ROM drives, to prevent the copying of music. This is done by intentionally introducing errors onto the disc that the embedded circuits on most standalone audio pliers scan automatically compensate for, but which may confuse CD ROM drives. Consumer rights advocates as of October 2001 pushed to require warning labels and compact discs that do not conform to the official compact disc digital audio standard to inform consumers which discs do not permit full fair use of their content. In 2005, Sony BMG Music Entertainment was criticized when a copy protection mechanism known as extended copy protection used on some of their audio CDs automatically and surreptitiously installed copy prevention software on computers. Such discs are not legally allowed to be called CDs or compact discs because they break the Red Book standard governing CDs, and Amazon.com for example describes them as copy-protected discs rather than compact discs or CDs. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.